watching myself, I found that I, I, I do say anyway a lot, and I probably will continue, and I say so a lot, and I combine so and anyway a lot. When you see me saying that a lot, you can bet that I've said it a whole lot more and that I cut it out of the videos. I thought it would be instructive, useful, or at least a way to, you know, to, you can see the way that I do things and you can bounce that off of the way other people do things. I just wanted to show you an, al an alternative to building the outside form. And, and I'm going to call this a storyboard. Um, I think that's a really good a really good term for it. Also, things like, uh, I've you notice, well, maybe you don't notice, but if you can see there's a line traced in here. Now there's this black line and then there's a red line here too. Now the black line is the paper template that I use to make, to, you know, to, to, to make the bending forms. Then the red line is the actual bending. So if I wanted to be rigid and wanted to be a conformist, I could make this guitar go to that line. I could make it do that. I just don't think that's necessary. So I call this a storyboard for that reason. This is the history of this guitar. Now. Another thing that people do with their designs, they, they, they build their, their sound box and then they have a, this, this thing that holds it together on the outside and then they'll contour this, this shape, this is the back of the guitar by the way, on a big surface where I think it's just it's, it's a bunch of grit and they'll contour the surface. Well, that's okay, I, but I think that there's an okay and there may be another way to do that. So, in my opinion, I can do that without having to have a big table set up and one of the one of my big requirements here is I need to be able to work as efficiently as I can in the space that I have. Here's my alternative. This is a board which by the way was I think a border for a computer desk about 10 years ago. So I've got two pieces of sticky uh, you know um, PSA adhesive um, sandpaper on the back of it and it's set so that I can sand the widest spot down to, well, I guess we can just see, down to about here. Now, if I wanted to, I could, I could, put, the, I could put the sticky, I, I could put this all the way across, but I really don't need to because I have some other sanding blocks. I can set this piece here at the widest spot, and I can make sure that, that my, my angles are good, right? So I'm just going along here. And that, that does everything that it needs to do. I'll put these posts around the edges of this, and I'll clamp the top down by putting a piece of wood here and just clamping down on the posts. Now, I have a big selection of clamping material for this. This is, this is so efficient to have. I mean, this is stuff you throw away. I have a hard time anymore. I have a really hard time throwing wood away. So I drilled this hole so I was able to reach that clamp, you know, the edge of that clamp right down underneath this block and I could block this down tightly. Then with my bunch of junk blocks, I corralled this piece to hold it really tightly where I wanted it. And I also clamped it here. Once I had it glued, I clamped it where I needed to clamp it and put little blocks where I didn't want it to move. You notice there's some space there and there's even a little bit of space there, which is fine. Um, Anyway, this storyboard allowed me to do all of this. Now, there's also a center line all the way down here that corresponds with everything. So that's part of this storyboard. And this, by the way, is I think mm, probably 22 inches by 4 feet. When I'm done, completely done, with these guitars, I'll take this piece out back and I'll store it. All these blocks will go back into this box. And then the next guitar, I've got my parts ready to go. So there we go. That's one big old guitar. And by the way, I don't want to get into like a real long discussion because I don't want to wear my camera out. I'm using poplar 
And I'm not using poplar because it's cheap, because it's actually not cheap. The point of it is, is it's a really good tone wood. The big beef with poplar is it's got this green tone to it. This is how much I cut off of my shapes. That's the contour of the back. You can see it's a pretty big contour. That's almost an inch. Um, so. <laughs> pretty cool guitar. Another thing I did was in in um, anticipation of doing some some um, some aesthetic stuff on this, I went ahead and put just this little piece in here. So I'm just kind of going through here. If I want to, I can put another post in and put a block in. I'm not pushing it real hard. And I like that I'm not pushing it real hard. I like that it's kind of going where it needs to go without me having to force it too hard. There's not a lot of um, not a lot of tension on these screws. Put your weight on there. So anyway, I'm being picky. I want to I want to see that bead of glue even all the way around there or fat like that I can deal with I can deal with all of that now keeping in mind that even having glued this in and make it make sure that my glue is a complete seam I'm probably going to go back through and route this and, and put binding on it I don't know that's what I want to do I might not I like binding, but it is a lot of work. And I have a center line that I used underneath here, and then I had a I had my inlay piece that I could tell was was my center back here, but it did slide forward. So I'm um, just right. <laughs> it is really close. I think so far it looks like a pretty good glue job. I think we're going to be good. All right, it's been about two hours. I was going to let that set all night, and then I thought to myself, I wonder how much glue ran down and got stuck on other, you know, these, these little internal fittings. I had a little bit of glue there, um, but I didn't have any glue down here. But my concern was is if I had a bunch of glue run down, like run down here and get stuck here, that then I might have a hard time getting it up off of the, uh, of the, um, of the um, storyboard. Storyboard. So... I went ahead and pulled it off, and I'm glad I did. Oh, this will be able to set up better. It looks really nice, though. I think it's it's real nice. I'll come in here with a chisel, and I'll clean all that stuff up. Um, probably before I'm done tonight, I'll put this on the um, on the belt sander. And you see what happened? It slipped forward. When I cut this out, I, I gave myself, eh, I don't know, like a, a, a small eight, I guess, but... It slid forward when I was clamping it down, but boy, I would have probably caught that. I'm sure glad that it wasn't any further than that. Anyway, um, this is what we've got. So it's afternoon. I went ahead and taken this all apart, put all the put all my pieces up. So really, just a bunch of blocks, and took this off. And it's looking pretty nice. You can see that this tail piece, it's a block of, of wood grain going this way, right? Then I dovetailed in two pieces of the grain going up and down. That way this is incredibly strong. If I just used one block with the grain going one way or the other, it would be less strong. Um, but this is a, a really strong laminated piece. I ground or sanded. A little off just leaving leaving a little edge there and the glue and I like doing that if if you if if you take the glue off um, before it's dried all the way you usually end up with a crack showing that glue is a bit of a filler it'll pull it out of the crack it just does so after a rough sanding which has coated everything in here 
with um, you know, some sawdust. There's the, our basic, the basic um, beginnings. I guess you could say. All my seams look really good, although I will, will more than likely put binding on here. I always do that. I don't know why I hit and brush things, but I do. I could just point it like I'm going to put binding there. So I'm, I'm pleased. That's a, a real nice. A really nice look. Then you can see the the curvature is nice. It's okay. I like it. So that's that was successful. So I guess it's bracing next. Well, all right. That's what it has to be. Then, damn it. Fine, that's what it's going to be. Different day, same shirt. Um, you know, I've been realizing something. I'm not really, I'm not really old. I do have gray hair. I do have a lack of hair. All the hair I have left is mainly gray, and I'm pretty wrinkly. And I could explain a lot of that away, um, but I'm not really old, not yet. I'm getting there though. But what I'm finding is the more time you spend on Earth. You don't necessarily have to be old. The more you understand things, which makes sense if you're thinking about things, and the more likely it is you become really grumpy about stuff. It's not really old age. It's, not, it's, it's the understanding of things. It's not really old age. Or it's, you know, maybe in a sense, you know, you've been in a situation a million times before, and you had patience a long time ago, and now you don't have any patience. Something like that, maybe. So anyway, I'm just going to preface that. I was looking at the um, plans for, for this jumbo. Now this came from Georgia Luthier Supply, okay? And I'm following the plans loosely. I'm looking at what they have there because I have my own my own ideas and I I have my own experience. And these plans are, you know, they're, they're they have some. Well, okay, right away. This is the United States. This is America. Now, here in the United States and in, in America, we have for a long time had the tradition of using imperial measurements. We we use we use inches, we use feet, yards, whatever, and we don't use millimeters. Now, I say this understanding that I've used millimeters in the past. Um, I've used um, Celsius. So there are times when I use a metric system. I, I just do. And I think that it's it's useful, and it's I mean it's valid everywhere around the world. I'm not saying it isn't, but when on the plans, the metric system is in big bold letters, and the imperial system, our United States standard system, whatever you call it, is now the little lettering. That bothers me. I suppose if I lived in England, it might bother me too. If I lived in Canada, it probably wouldn't bother me so much. I don't know. I don't know how the systems. I don't know how the majority of the systems are, but I do know that they're more of a global thing than a national thing. And I'm, I guess you could call me old fashioned. I just like, it's kind of cool, you know, feet and inches. It's, it's an interesting thing. There's history to it that, that I like that is beyond the, the scientific validity or whatever you want to call it, the mathematical, whatever it is, you know, the idea that it equates better. I get it. You know, their standard units are, are, are the scientific units have a have a place I, i'm not mocking that but in a situation where pretty much everyone in the united states has tape measures tape measures tape measures um rulers what else have i got here tape measures um well okay there's another little tape couple tapes down here that's really her couple rules out here everything that I have is basically inches it's not millimeters so why in the hell does Georgia call these people out Georgia Luthier supply decide that we need to have the metric system called out in front of us so what are they 
what the hell, you know? This is America. I just like what we have. It's, it's nice, our history. Why does our history need to be swept away? It's not bad history. It's just history. It's a freaking number. And I guess that, that someone could say on the other side of this argument, it's just a freaking number. So I guess suppose it is. But like I said, when every measurement gauge that I have around here, and if you go to a hardware store, every measurement thing that you see is pretty much going to be in feet and inches here in the United States. You know, the more I look at these plans, the more I hope people are paying attention. Okay, there's a line down here. This is a line right here, and this line represents a piece of maple, three millimeters thick, or as I guess us old people would call it, an eighth of an inch uh, by an inch. Okay, the idea is that this is supposed to strengthen this, this seam. So you're supposed to cut a piece of maple an inch wide by an eighth of an inch tall and glue it through here, front to back. And then cut it to put your braces in. Glue it in first and then cut it later. So, already, here's my issue. My first issue is that if you're strengthening the brace, if you glue a piece, okay, let's get something that's, that's um, like 3.78 millimeters here. These are, my, these are my two pieces. I glue them together so they're supposed to be stronger. Well, this is pretty weak, right? So I'm gonna get a little strength. Um, let's say I get, I get, I don't know, let's try that right there. See if I can break this. Easy, okay. Now, if I put my pieces like this, I try to break it, okay, there's just no way in hell I can break it. So, so I don't know who the hell designed this guitar, but if you're putting a guitar together, watch out really carefully because it could be the person that's putting, if you're doing it off of plans with advice, look at it and pay attention and think about it, okay. If you really want to improve this seam, and here's what I'm going to do. Rather than have a piece of, okay, maple, they, they call maple out. So they're talking about a pretty tough wood, but still maple breaks along the grain, you know, easier than it does across the grain. So, so they're saying, okay, let's put a piece in over the top of this an inch wide, you know, along the grain. Well, I'm going to say, screw that crap, hippie. Screw you, hippie. I'm going to put a piece of cross grain in between every one of these intersections because the cross grain is is so much stronger as a unit. Now, the cross grain piece, when you're handling it, it's really weak. It's just, it's gonna be an inch wide of a cross grain piece. They'll break so simply. However, glued down to, to um, grain at 90 degrees, it's incredibly strong. like this they're like I use them for glue sticks or shims they're just you know, really nice but these are my these are my first two braces Okay, not to beat the dead horse. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna beat this dead horse. Okay, so here's my choice. I can follow the plans and put a piece of, um, of wood in here. Um, parallel grain, they do call for maple. Uh, but still, I can take a piece of eighth inch maple and snap it pretty easy by hand. So they're saying that's gonna strengthen it. And they're right, it's gonna strengthen it. It's not gonna strengthen it much at all. In fact, it's almost not even worth doing it. Um, the glue would probably be the strongest thing. However, if you put this piece in, then you have some strength. You have some serious strength. 
So that's what I'm going to do. I cut two of these pieces. Uh, I just wanted to point that out to you because this is a big deal. This, this is, I mean, that's just really bad that someone would suggest doing something like that. Okay, I want to show you something. I'm getting this really close to my line. And you notice I put a mark up here because I, I, it's just my center line. Now, what I've been doing is I've been putting this in, I've been setting my pencil parallel to um, the wood and just making a little bit of a mark here, like so, and like so. So, I've been doing that. Actually, I started out, it was quite a bit bigger, and I'm just working my way in. Now, obviously, if I cut those marks, I'm going to be too small. So, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, to profile these to fit this curve, and then I'm just going to slowly ease these in. So, now, if you do this, if you put your back on last, these pieces will actually go underneath, underneath the, um, the, um, the vertical frame. That's actually structurally nice. I like that. However, I know that glue is so incredibly strong that once you glue this down, if you glue it properly, it's never coming back up. So it's not going to change the strength of the structure to do this this way. I know after all the harping I did about the perpendicular grain, I might sound like a hypocrite. So this is very small, very small adjustments that I'm doing. As you can see we're darn near there. We'll just take a little bit more off that end and we're good. We're good on that side. This side will this side will go in a little bit of a little bit of help from me. Could be enough. Yeah, you know what I'm going to do? I'll use a piece of sandpaper to finish that. Okay, let's check this out. Okay, we're about perfect. See in here. Yes. Okay, I'm going to call that. I'm going to call that one good for now. So what we got here are the braces that are just ready to go, and and you can see that they've been they've been feathered on the ends, and that they have a taper. This is a good time to, to show you what I'm up to. I use the same blocks that I used before. I just reconfigured them. I put a screw in the back, filled some holes, and made some higher stands. I'm using the same, let's call it the storyboard, but now I've just turned it over. I've set the, the, um, the sound box on some towels so that I can smash down and so that I can allow the, the, that, the interior to bow if it wants to. And then with these little simple rail I've got clamping ability inside the guitar so inside the sound box so you can see what I've done is I've just used my other other pieces and I'm clamping them inside the only new addition here I'm cutting a couple wedges out of some wombi material and I cut some of my poplar into just little pieces that I use if you can see that to get right to the edge so that feathered edge is getting held down. And you can also see that I've thrown some tape in here and that's because I, I want to keep a clean line. I just got done taking the tape out of this one. You notice how nice that line is? And I've got a little glue, you know, call it friendly fire. I've got some in the areas, but that takes a lot of it out of there so I don't have as much of this kind of stuff. Which, by the way, most of that's going to get covered up by the curfing, so it'll just keep it clean. It'll keep it clean. My nephew was here um, yesterday and, and, and made the comment that, that um, the inside of this looked pretty crappy, so 
This is for you, Brian. Keeping it clean. Keep in mind that every time you tension one of these up, all the others need to be checked. And so if, if you have some ca catastrophe, you know, you could have a catastrophe that's like a, a giant catastrophe. So there is a downside to doing this. However, I didn't have any problems, but I could just see that this could go south on you if like say, your board breaks, you have a knot in it, or maybe a screw strips out, or you know, some ridiculous thing like that might happen. Okay, it's been a few hours. Let this dry. Probably three hours. It doesn't really take too long. But before I start taking it apart, I want to put on some glasses so that I can see what I am doing. And let's take a look down here. I'm seeing, I'm believing we're probably okay. It looks like. Hmm. Here's the thing, if it hasn't set up, I don't want to pull it up, but I've never at three hours had anything come undone. I've uh, been able to sand it at like an hour, even probably less if I really wanted to. So, I think we're okay. Um, everything seems good here. All these, these wedges are holding tension. So, obviously, gravity is still working. I believe. That's my scientific, scientific um, determination. Okay. We're looking nice here, everywhere. Nice. And it's a pretty neat, pretty neat um, construction. I like that also. I will, we'll cut this to lengthen and I'll knock these edges down so it's a smooth round corner. I like that idea. And I will say that's something that the engineer did include in their plans. Very important, of course, to have smooth corners here. Not so important to have proper proper engineering principles applied to the thing you're building, though. Why? Why would we do that, right? That would be just stupid, right? Unscientific. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, so, A, as you can see, I have got... It looks like it needs to go this way. Is that right? Looks right. So, here are my cross braces. Keeping in mind that I also have a laminate here and a laminate here, and I'm not worried about that breaking. I'm actually not even worried about this breaking. It's just that as far as the structure goes, it's nice to have a have a bit of a stiffener in the middle of it. I think that's a great idea. So I'm going to glue those in now. And I just put tape on again. It's like an extra like half hour's worth of work. I don't know. But just to keep things cleaner, it'll look better when you look down into that. It won't look like a disaster, you know, like looking into the hole of a dirty ship or something. It'll look nice down there. So anyway, okay, I'm going to glue it up. All right. Got all my little braces glued, and you know, I, I stuck them in there. I pulled the tape off so they have nice little edges. Um, and now I'm going to set a weight on these two, and a weight on these two, which will hopefully, that, and I'll put a weight on this one too. So there is my, that's my evil plan. I'm still adding, adding a little bit of tension to the back, and I think that's going to be plenty of tension to be a, to be a tough shell and not be like a floppy, you know, floppy, um, low frequency, um, eating, eating, um, know, membrane, whatever. All right, we got everything cleaned up in here, which is nice. It's a little area, it gets a little bit junky, I, I get it crazy. Um, so I reset this, used the same blocks, and added a couple little features um, this just allows me to, to get the top flat 
and to get the sides parallel they were out just a little tiny bit and so everything is is kind of right on the money now I believe I will certainly I will certainly um, double check it before I'm before I, I put the top on. All right, I'm getting my top ready to go. This is the way I make sure that I have a straight line. Rather than having a joiner, this works really well. I've been able to do make perfect seams without a joiner for years and years and years. Kind of sad. My top. That's pretty nice looking. So, all right. I'm going to set it up and glue it. I just thought you might like to see how you can, we can pretty much do a nice straight line without using a joiner. And that's what I've done here. All right, I think it's pretty good. It's annoying because you're clamping where you want to see. So glue top, took it apart. You saw me glue it. This is the back of it. It's actually sitting upside down. So my rougher joint, or my less sanded joint is here. It looks pretty good on the other side. Went ahead and cut my little, my bracing out with Sitka spruce. So I've got that roughed into shape and then I've got some extras, extra pieces, which I'll just throw in with the rest of it. Got a big pile of it. So what I'll do with these pieces is I'll cut enough pieces to do a brace around this sound hole. So now I'm just cleaning them up. I'm going to get them more or less into the shape that the plans call for and then leaving just a little bit for for um, voicing. So I'm just taking my time and making my cuts so that they're pretty accurate. You can see I'm using a, a drill vise cheap like I don't know $15. I don't know what I paid for it but just a really great way to do a couple things here. Um, if I can get this out of here without hurting it. I don't want to, to go down any deeper than that. I don't mind scratching my drill vise up a little bit. That's why I put tape on here. So that's my stop. And then I use a, a razor knife to make my cuts. You know, I'm, it's a funny thing. I'm finding that I have a bunch of files and they're in pretty good shape, but that my homemade um, Sandpaper files are better. There's a one that is just that just does so much better when I go to shaping. Here's a double-sided same thing. Good morning. Ha! It's not morning. I fooled you again. So just cleaning the braces up. I I don't want to take too much off of them, but I'm smoothing them down. You know, and I made them made them about a thirty-second of an inch bigger than what they were supposed to be which gives me the ability to, to sand them and they're soft wood so it um you know they're, they're going to be okay uh, anyway i'm just working my way through i also went ahead and drilled a gigantic hole through this brace and this brace i don't particularly need it but still i kind of like having it and you know funny as it is this brace has a lot of power just with these two little webs here so it's so if, if, if it survives, and that's basically for a truss rod, if I choose to put a truss rod in, which I probably will. But I also went ahead and dropped this down because I probably have a fitting in here that I want to be able to reach. And I may even drop it down further, but I don't want to have to fight this to, you know, to adjust that. So anyway, uh, most of these are, are um, in good shape. I'm getting ready to glue these on, but I went ahead and just made some marks. I'll cut that middle mark. I missed a couple. Which is marking these where I know I'm okay to cut. Wow, you're still working. Okay, it's a little bit after midnight. I've been 
been like every three hours bracing and moving braces. Right now I have my, my two little tuning tuning um, braces put in. So, so far so good. Everything's been working well. Um, you may notice that I'm, I'm using a flat surface. I'm setting it up on a flat surface, but I'm getting it up so I can use clamps on the edges. But I'm everywhere that there's a weight sitting on it, there is a piece of, of material underneath holding it. So I'm just keeping it held flat. I'm going to try to hold this camera like head height and see how it's going to work. I have to hold it way up here though because I'm pretty tall, so it's, you know, it's tiring. Um, if I were shorter, it would be less work. It's actually not true, is it? Because I think the closer you are to the center of gravity, the stronger the gravitational pull. So I'm a little lying to you. Here we go. This is the bottom of the top. I put the bracing in. I went ahead and followed pretty much their, their plans. I have some ideas about, about this acoustic stuff, but well, yeah, that's for another video. So you can see the seam is pretty prominent on the inside. I didn't, didn't concern myself with making it an invisible seam. In fact, I've drawn a pencil line on it to even ex ex accentuate it. This is a piece of maple. It's a little bit less than an eighth of an inch thick. When I put this piece of maple in, I really it really um, limited the sound range of this. And I've been picking it up and you know thumping on it like it's a vibrating bar. It has some pretty cool sounds to it until I put this piece on. Now, when I put this these pieces on, which is something that I think is a good thing to do, um, this dampened it deadened the, the this top completely. So that's fine. I'll deal with it. Probably this brace is going to get hacked pretty good. That looks like a pretty good central spot to open up, um, but you'll notice that I've got pieces of um, Sitka, this is Sitka, this is maple because the bridge is going to sit on the other side of that. This needs to be stout. This is just to thicken around the sound hole. I, I'd really wanted a, a large, a thicker sound hole. And the sound hole comes up into this area, so most of this was going to get cut out of here, but what's left will help support the sound hole. Um, and I am, I'm just letting it all dry here. My next step will be to do some work on the front. If I'm going to do any, any, you know, pretty aesthetic stuff on the top of this guitar, and now's the time for me to do it. So I'm segued over to using a piece of um, Stuart McDonald hardware, which isn't mine. This is. Don't tell my nephew I did this, that I've taken his thing apart. I really don't like this thing. So that piece, whatever, it will work. And what I'm going to do here is mount this here. As you can see, this was setting like that. Then this piece, and I just cut this out with, the, with my jigsaw. I'm not trying to make anything fancy here. Let's call it a prototype. How does that sound? I think it'll work fine. but. This is kind of the nature of this. As I go, I find that I want to do, some, do something in a different way. And I get more, and you probably know this if you watch any of my videos, I enjoy building parts that build things probably even more than I like building things. I like building the things to build things. I mean, that's what I have, you know. The things that I build go away. They, they, they sell them, they're gone. But the things that I keep are the things that I use to build the things. Maybe that's why I like building things. I don't know what it is, but whatever. It's just, so that's what I'm going to do. You can see that I've reconfigured this, what I'm calling the storyboard. Moved, moved this over and set it up here. And this is just, just so that I can put the top on. If you can see what I'm doing here is I've reinforced this block and this block and I'm using I'm using a, a wedge here and what I'll do when I put that top on it is that I will measure from this point to this point I'll make sure that my symmetry is right and that's you know that's just that's my way of, of getting around using that outer form I don't think that it's really necessary <laughs>
Okay, here's my modified my modified um, bolt head. There's the, there's my version of a of a compass type um, rig for a Dremel. So I put a piece of Teflon on the back of it, so that worked out well. I went ahead, drilled my hole, and then I marked two spots. I'm just going to do real simple. I'm just going to do black, white, black, space, and black, white, black. And then I'm going to come in just a little bit more and cut, cut it out. So I'm going to tentatively call that, carefully setting it over there, I'm going to tentatively call that pretty good. Let me clean that junk out of that. It fits in there okay. So I, I gave it the, the treatment, I let it set a couple hours. Um, and then I've taken I, I've taken a rough block. Actually, I used this little block here with some pretty rough paper, and then finer paper, and knocked it down till it's there's a I can feel it a little bit. I, I don't want to get it all. I'm not got the concern about getting it all right now, but I did want to get it knocked down. Now this will allow me to to come back in and and run the run run the little router. On my inside hole. Keeping in mind, there we go. Here we go. All right. Okay. So that's that's basically it. I'll just take a sanding block and carefully knock the high end down with this one. When it gets close, I'll now use my finer grit and I'll clean it up and I'll leave it similar to this. So you know, pre-finish. I'm not trying to finish it, but I just want to knock it down, you know, down below, down below, or down actually down to the surface, not down below it, but to it. So okay, alrighty. Um, Y'all have a good night. Um, take a look at this. This is my just real simple rosette. I'm not going fancy. I'm just nice and simple. I like simple. That looks pretty good. So now I'm just putting in some little pieces of curving. I'm just going to fit them around these braces and making them out of, of these, these sticks, big and fat. Uh, you look about a half inch on the side and about a 15 degree angle. That's roughly what's going on. Here's my here's my um, curving cutter. So you can see I, I can drop back behind the blade, push into the blade, and then I've got a little piece of metal that basically keys my my cuts. Here's a piece of spruce. Which I, you can see, I bent it hard here, and, I, and I've actually cracked that web just a little bit. That's why it's got that. Which I really don't mind, but anyway, you can see it's pretty, pretty floppy. This is spruce, and so I'll do this on the top. I'll do this around the top. So this is really going to be a pretty stout guitar, maybe too stout, but 
at this point I'm okay with it. Here is the um, here's what I've got for the for the um, sound hole, and I'm I'm happy. It's it's not hugely um, messy. <laughs> anyway, I um, like that. So a lot of strength there. So that works pretty well. I can control my control my curve pretty good. I can control the, my um well what am I saying? I can make it relatively precise. And I can keep a lot of the dust down. So that's all that's really for. Well, all is not well in my little shot. My little delta sander. Or yeah. Which uh, replaced this capacitor probably four months ago. It looks like the contactor is um, a little bit messed up. Kind of found it in that state. This piece with a lot of carbon on it. And this piece melted or melting. So it looks to me like like I'm going to go down and get myself a contactor tomorrow, or at least try. Boy, that is cheap. Damn cheap. Anyway, so 120 volt contactor. Yeah. All right, I guess I'm done. Good morning. So I'm trying to fix my bell sander. I, I looked online, and I think it's more of a hard start system rather than just a, a start relay. The way it looks like to me, it looks like it kicks the capacitor in and then kicks it out. So anyway, I'm gonna try to just fix the relay. I got it started. It actually ran for about a minute. And then it blew up, which tells me that if I open up that panel, I'll probably find a blown capacitor because a stupid relay probably didn't kick out. So, that's what I'm going to assume. I'll make that assumption. That's annoying as hell. Because now I have to either get a hard start kit for the thing or put a new motor in it. I'm still working on this damn sander. I rebuilt the relay and it worked one time and then it actually stuck in closed position it didn't actually open I thought maybe I left a spring out but I just think it, I, I, I don't think I did um, anyway blew the capacitor up I, I may have caught that I, I have a capacitor in the trash can so because I live in a little town I wasn't able to go find I, I guess the, the most suitable replacement parts however I did get some really heavy duty stuff which costs a lot of money. I mean, you know, retail, and I'm happy to support the businesses around here, but I spent probably, I spent $100 on that. And that big capacitor there, that's just the same microfarad um, that, that was in here at 270, but it's a, it's, it's a much bigger, beefier version. As you can see, it is pretty much so giant that it can't live in this little little container so I, I've um, put a little connection on it anyway um, it works fine though this this is a pretty cool little potential relay it's adjustable so I'm kind of impressed with it but it's also you know a hundred dollar fix but my alternative was put a different motor on here or buy a new sander you know, I mean, I didn't really have much of an alternative because of cheap, crappy parts that they used. I mean, this is a cheap, crappy part. It, well, okay. It speaks for itself. It lasted for a while. So, and now it's done. All right, look at this. My shop is put back in place. Life is good again. My sander's working. And they're doing pretty good. So anyway, I'll continue this, get these pieces put in. Uh, I have two more to go. So, I'll 
I'll continue on. Anyway, all right. Shutting down for the day. Got the lights on, turned off, got the place cleaned up. Have a bell sander that works. It's all glued on here. You notice that my cuts are a little different. I went a little bit wider, a little narrower here. And and all my cuts are, they're not precisely right on the money as far as the, um, the serrations, I guess. And um, I don't think that's a problem. The point of this is that it holds the top and the bottom on better, especially when you do binding and you know, when you put binding on. I think I've got plenty of strength um, anyway. So I'm pretty pleased with it. It's nice and clean. Pretty stout. I want to put some little um, vertical pieces in here to do some cross grain bracing. So I got my little vertical pieces in, just really tiny little really tiny little sticks, um, thinner than this even, and a couple of them. I, I think that, that thickness is really less of an issue. I think that the surface area, oh, the perpendicular grain, um, is the thing. So anyway, that's what's going on in there. Try to keep it as clean as possible, clean up a lot of glue. It's pretty clean in there. I'm sure I could do better, but it, I could do a lot worse too. All right, good night. Time to fit this neck into this slot, actually get it all fit in. Um, in preparation of putting the top on, I'd like to get the neck seated and as accurate as possible. So what I'll do is I'll set the table saw with the fence and I'll make a cut. I'll, I'll just cut these, you know, th this little bit off until that's fully seated in there. And I'll do it a little bit at a time, and I'll be, be, be careful doing it. And the reason I'm telling you and not showing you is because I think my cam is ready to die. There's no bars left, so I'm probably going to have to take it up and plug it in and charge it up. So, in fact, I'll do that. I'll make these cuts. I'll fit this in while I'm at it. As long as the camera doesn't die, I'll also cut some of the bottom off so that it sits down in here. And this is an angle too, so I'll probably straighten that up. I'll probably cut a piece off here and make it. So I fitted this in. It's real close. This is real close. Just kind of, you know, just, you know, trying to make sure. What I like and what I want is I want for this guitar neck to fit into this slot exactly. And it's right now, it's it's really, really close, if not right on the money. Um, before I tighten it up, and then when I tighten it up, that it snugs up and it stays where it needs to stay tight. And when I say tighten it up, what I mean is I think that I'll go ahead and um, I'll put a couple of bolts in in this to, to hold it. I just I like that idea. I'll probably glue it also, but um, I don't know. Yeah, it'll pro I'll probably glue it. I think that it should be glued. It's that's just tricky because if I can get it to fit really good and have it bolted in, I probably don't really need to glue it. But if I do glue it, it's stronger. It'll stay together pretty much forever, which is a bad side about gluing it. What if I, what if I need to do some adjusting on it? You know, maybe, maybe not glue it right away. Maybe I don't know. I don't know. Plus, once it's glued in, I can't really detach it, so finishing becomes an issue. I'm not really sure. I've got my my um, center line damn near dead on, and that's nice to see. Kind of important. Liberal amounts of glue. Um, same here. Liberal amounts of glue. I have two reference points. That reference point, which I'll have to pull out, but that's a good reference point. And then this line, that's it. So.
Now I'm sorry. Do this again. Okay. I have got a a well, let's say just a put together sound sound box. I'm liking it. It's pretty nice. Everything went together real well. It's got a good sound to it. Anyway, um, the glue joint came out really nice. Of course, it's a giant glue joint. There's really, really, um, I know, still have some sanding to do on it. Really giant glue joint, and I like that. So, my next step for this is to finish the sanding of it, make sure that it's, it's all nice. I think I fill some spots. Um, yeah, and then put some binding on it. So, So I'll probably bind the front and back. Oh boy, I kind of like the way that looks without binding. However, this poplar, which I think is pretty cool wood, isn't that hard. Um, so it might be that it's going to be useful to have some binding on it. Now I also need to put a truss rod in this neck with my my um, tightening device um, originating there. So that's really going to be my next thing to do. Um, so what I did was I, I made some basic drawings here. And you notice I've got a sort of a bow here. It's, it's just a bunch of straight depths. These are all 30 seconds, by the way. Not millimeters. Of course, they could also almost be millimeters. They were 25th, 25.4s. So here's my, here's my cut. What I did was I measured the height of my saw blade and here at eight, that's the depth of that cut. Then I stopped here and I made my, I raised my blade up and I made this cut to 10, ran it all the way across, went to here, made it 12, ran it all the way across. Then for this, for this area here, made it 14, 30 seconds. So what I have, is basically a curve which is roughly that kind of curve there that's and that's rough but that's okay it doesn't need to be beautiful yet so i've got this curve in here now jim christmas <sighs> jiminy christmas i was saying things a lot a lot more pointed than that just a few seconds ago this is the third time now that i'm trying to film this freaking thing so okay um yeah, my attitude comes out of nowhere, doesn't it? <laughs> I mean, it doesn't, but I mean, for you, it does. I just finished filming or finished making this. Uh, attempting to film something, anything today has been a disaster. But this is the truss rod or truss strap, whatever you want to call it. It's basically a truss rod that I want to put in here. Obviously, it is not a rod. It is a strap, but it will set in like so. This end will stick out. I don't know, somewhere in that area. I've, I, I kind of cut it long. This piece is going to get to get um, a pocket cut out for it. And I'll also put a couple screws in it facing forward. Wrap this up. Piece of wax paper carefully. Yeah, see, I got that tighter. I like it tight right there. I'm not that concerned about it. Um, I think it'll be tight enough everywhere else. I don't want to. I don't want to jam it. Okay, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut some of that out of there. You can see there's what I've got. 
Now it really came out nice and flat. That's, that's pretty decent. Um, I'm happy with it. I just carefully, carefully need to trim some of this down before I take a plant to it. So I just got a lot of it knocked down. Cool. So that's looking pretty good. Let's see how it came out. I got this old guy, which I think is the one that I rebuilt. I don't know where this one came from. I think I bought this one a few years ago. But I think this is a good one. I mean, the clean, sharp one. So, and this one seemed like it's pretty good. Anyway. But I want to use a plane on this because I really don't want to get down too deep. Uh, I don't want to cause too much damage to my surface. So I'm going to give that a shot. So I'll check in with you. Um, okay. So most of them were actually good. Every one of them cut a little bit. Um, so between the three of them and then, of course, my trusty sanding blocks. I love these things. I was able to, to get this nice and flat. And any of the little scarring that you see on there, what doesn't go away from being contoured, well, that's that's just a reminder of, of what a, I mean, a reminder to me of the damage that a plane can do. But anyway, I just carefully took it down. Um, and so we're pretty much the level we need to be. And the couple, couple scars that are left, on there aren't that bad, aren't that big, and they're they're easy to deal with. So I've done much worse with a plane, but I don't know if you can see that or not. But it looks pretty darn flat. It looks pretty good. So I'm pleased with with that result. So on to the next thing. The block that I'm using is that thick. And then there's a piece under under that, or a piece behind that that's about you know, about three eighths thick. So if I leave it in this area somewhere, that's going to be a good place to grab it. But if I do this, I could weld these two connector um, nuts together, banjo bolts, banjo nuts together, or I could I'll probably weld this cap screw cap bolt in in here. But anyway. I'm still left with what to do here if I don't weld these two together and I don't want to do that. So what I did was I have a piece of um, half inch tubing. I went ahead and knocked it down a little bit so it should it should fit into this hole and then be a little bit tight right here. And the idea is that I'll go ahead and and make it fit flush here um, but Anyway, so I've got it roughly cut down. I'll get my grinder and I'll separate it from this piece right here. And then I'll, uh, I'll put this back on the, the lathe. <laughs> okay, I'll cut it in that V area with my grinder. Then I'll put the little piece back on the lathe and I'll flatten that piece out. Flatten the left. Well, I'll just do it. Sometimes it's better to just do this stuff. So, there. Now I'll put this piece in the lathe and I'll flatten it. And the idea is it just extends, it's, I guess, a large washer. that will there you go it'll just it'll make the um, it'll just space it out and it'll also distribute 
the um, load a little bit better against the, the neck. So there's what I want to do. Got a storm coming through. It's going to be hot, I'm sure. Let me just pick it up with something that... There we go. So, there we are, this little guy here probably hot. It's not that hot. Wow. Kind of refreshing. So this goes here. In this piece, just place it against it. And that gives it that gives it a good this is a nice piece of metal. Um, but it gives it a A nice, a nice, um, I don't know, thick washer, whatever. That gets my, my truss rod built. It creates a nice, strong nut that, that I can, can tighten the thing with, that I can actually get to. And it, it spreads the, um, it spreads the force pretty decently on this end grain of this maple. So I, I like all of that. And I think it, it will probably fit pretty well. It will be a matter of using a file and tightening that or opening this hole up so this fits flush. So I'll do that. And then it's kind of rough, so I'll probably deburr it. All right. And like I said, there's a big storm going on out here blowing through here. Well, this is Creighton, Colorado. We, we get lightning and we get, we get, this is the most, usually, we get some wind. And I have seen tornadoes here. There have been tornadoes here in the past. So, you know, nothing big though. This is a really, as far as weather goes, this is probably the most boring Oh, place it gets. Okay, that wasn't famous last words, but you know, it was close. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna finish up. So I guess, I guess this week was actually a better week to be inside. It's snow out today, so. So it's a good thing I didn't tear into the construction project outside. It would have been bad. So I'm doing work in here, of course. As you can see, I'm playing around here. I've got this taken care of. This is sanded down. It's pretty good. I think I've already shown this. I nicked it a couple times with the um, plane. Um, so anyway, it's not as bad as I could have. I want to fill this. Not that it's that big of a deal, but it, it just, I don't know, I just don't like it not being filled. I, I hate the idea of it being this little void underneath the um, top of the neck. So, I'm going to fill it. Something that really annoys me when I when I use glue like this is when I put it on, I'll pile it up like that because I can file it down. It seems like there's always a hole. There's always a spot that I missed and it annoys me. Welding is the same way. But so that just takes care of my my um, desire to, I don't know, 
whatever. But, all right, so good enough for now. Good morning. It's been a while. I haven't worked on the guitar for probably three weeks, two, three weeks. I'm waiting to, to build some parts so that I can continue. And just in case you've ever seen this in any of my videos and wondered what it's for, this part of what I'm doing right now, I'm finishing some aluminum parts today. So I have different media for different types of material. I have steel for, for metal, um, steel, and rocks work the best for, for um, aluminum. They make it, well, that's the finish I like anyway. So we'll take, we'll take a piece of aluminum from this thing, which is, yeah, 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 not so great. And it'll put it, it'll give it a patina, a, a real nice uh, matte finish. And it will smooth the edges. 